Good morning all. My name is Jobin Wilson. I am from the R&D department, uh, Flytext India, on sabbatical doing my uh, PhD at IIT Delhi. Um, so this uh, work uh, describes our approaches for the KDD Cup challenge. Uh, along with me, my team members Ram Mohan and Muhammad Arif, under the guidance of Professor Shantanu Chaudhary and Dr. Brijesh Lal from IIT Delhi, was involved in this work. So, uh, I think we heard enough about the challenge. We have a fair idea of <laughs> what the challenge uh, was. Um, and um, so, essentially, we have to derive and <coughs> importance of research institutions uh, by predicting uh, the number of full research papers that would potentially get accepted. And we could use any public information. Okay, so I've highlighted full research papers and utilizing public uh, information. Um, because those are the two critical aspects as we will see uh, further in the presentation. So there, uh, for us, we found three problems actually. One is identifying the full research papers. Uh, of course, for the five years, there was a list uh, that was provided to us, but uh, our thought was if we had uh, more historical data, maybe we could fit better models. So that was one problem. The second problem was uh, forecasting the relevance scores, uh, or the REL score as we call it, um, uh, based on uh, public information as well as history, um, and to finally generate a rank list, which would be our submission. And the third problem is that since the ground truth is not yet available, all you have is the history and the model that you are working on, and how do you basically compare between ca candidate models that you have built. Okay. So again, the three phases of the conference uh, having different weightages. And uh, what we observed was that the nature of the conferences that were due for prediction across phases also varied. And hence, uh, a single model for us at least didn't work uh, for all the phases. So we had to fit multiple models uh, and, and pick the best one corresponding to each phase. And the evaluation metric is NDCG at uh, uh, 20. And um, 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 j just a refresher, the relevance score or the rel score is the votes that a research institution accumulates based on the um, other information for the research papers uh, from that institution being uh, accepted at a particular conference of interest. Uh, so in one slide, uh, the summary of our approach and uh, the tools we used to solve this. So uh, our approach initially involved identifying the accepted full research papers uh, of a particular conference of interest across years. That means if it was SIG IR or, uh, uh, or a conference of that like, we will have longer history till the 1970s. And maybe for KDD, we will have history from 1994 onwards. Uh, second is, uh, once we have full research paper titles identified, can we get uh, the, uh, the REL scores calculated by joining the papers file and the paper or the affiliations file to generate a history for each institution, for each conference of interest, and to view it as a, a univariate time series? And finally, to forecast the REL score for the upcoming instance of that conference by uh, doing time series modeling or, or uh, similar candidate models. For us, the data sources, of course, the primary source was uh, Microsoft Academic Graph, and uh, uh, that was approximately 100 GB uncompressed when downloaded. And uh, later on, we figured out uh, that we could also use uh, ACM Digital Library, which basically uh, captures the proceedings. And, and the reason we went by this route was uh, the Microsoft Academic Graph didn't uh, differentiate between full research papers or posters or the other type uh, of um, uh, acceptance. Uh, also, we realized that the number of uh, pages that a paper has is also a good indicator of whether it's a full research paper or not. So we had to basically crawl ACM Digital Library to basically extract all the full accepted <coughs> papers and these additional features, which section it belonged to, and uh, what is the number of uh, pages that it holds. 
Then uh, tools, we used uh, Apache Spark and Apache SQL, uh, uh, the Spark SQL uh, on, on top of Apache Spark. Um, that was basically to deal with the papers and the paper author affiliations files uh, to basically extract the rel scores. Then uh, modeling was done in Python with the help of uh, scikit-learn packages and stats models packages. So uh, in summary, the flow is something like this. Uh, from uh, the external data and the ACM digital library data, we identify full research papers. Then we use the Microsoft Academy graph data and extract the historical rel scores. Then basically we feed it into a forecasting model, then uh, use the rel scores to order the institutions uh, in, in a descending order to basically generate the ranking. Uh, we do cross-validation for three years uh, and we also finally generate the submission based on uh, the best models that uh, perform well on the cross-validation. Some, uh, some useful uh, observations uh, from uh, uh, ACM Digital Library. So um, it gives us clues on which year's proceedings it is and also it gives us a chance to crawl because uh, previous year's proceedings is right there. Um, and also the total number of pages is also available and the um, section to which a particular paper belongs can also be identified from here. So essentially, uh, um, as, as I explained earlier, it's, it's uh, a, a univariate time series uh, forecasting uh, problem. So uh, rel scores for an institution uh, for a particular conference of uh, interest across years forms a time series, univariate time series. If a, for a particular year, if that institution doesn't have any papers, then the rel scores would be uh, set to zero. Then uh, uh, box Jenkins models and exponential uh, smoothing was primarily our two uh, uh, weapons. And uh, the rank list generated by ordering the institutions uh, uh, I mean, basically, we use the rel scores forecasted to basically generate the ranking and uh, do a submission. So just uh, to gloss over the basic models, uh, so ARIMA modeling is a uh, quite popular technique. Uh, so it's a combination of uh, autoregressive uh, uh, process and the moving average process. And uh, it is ARIMA because um, we see that um, the uh, time series are sometimes not stationary and there, there are a lot, lot of fluctuations. So we kind of difference, uh, take the difference as well to kind of uh, reduce the impact. So this was one uh, candidate uh, model. Then uh, exponential smoothing was another. So essentially that means is that uh, the intuition is that um, uh, the potential of an institution to have an accepted paper of, uh, in a conference upcoming is likely uh, more related to the immediate past than to the long history. But exponential smoothing uh, allows us to do a, a kind of weighted averaging uh, by considering these facts. And uh, uh, the model parameter alpha, which basically determines the weight of how important the most recent observation was versus how important the most recent forecast was, uh, can be empirically determined by, by doing a grid search uh, in a one directional sense. And um, um, also we observed that the nature of conference is also varied a lot. That is why the alpha, par tuning the parameter alpha would be necessary. Because alpha value for a KDD forecast wouldn't be uh, as good as alpha value for the multimedia forecast. Um, also, we tried a very naive exponential smoothing, which is like um, the intuition is that uh, if you have a simple non-parametric exponential smoothing scheme wherein you have uh, decaying weights as you go back exponentially and see if uh, that would work. Uh, in fact, uh, the model is very simple but uh, resulted in quite good results in phase two. So this simple model was used for our phase two results which put us on rank two for that phase, but uh, it was interestingly this kind of a very simple model. But again the catch is you have to get the good history and that involves parsing, crawling and a lot of stuff. So, so identifying full research papers is again challenging. Um, 
initially it was done manually by going to the conference website but that's very painful if you if you need to have a long history then we decide then when then we figured out that you could crawl acm uh, digital library and basically do some manual filtering rules uh, based on the paper length and the section names like for instance poster sections are not likely to have full research papers or um, a full research paper may not be a three pages so something like that those kind of rules were used and finally a text classifier was used to basically um, uh, um, to have a classification given the uh, section name so basically you could use a five year history that was provided to train such a classifier and then use that train classifier to forecast for every new section for a conference whether it's likely a full research paper or not then of course we had a manual verification step uh, involved to to make sure that the list is good and uh, the classif text classification was basically using svm uh, linear svm for text and the paper length was also a good feature so hence we used a random forest classifier to basically predict if it's likely a full research paper or not based on the length of the paper so uh, phase one we made a big mistake uh, we didn't consider uh, full research papers because we thought uh, accepted papers would be a good uh, representative uh, for the rel scores and the ranking but uh, that proved to be um, uh, incorrect and um, so uh, our cross validation average scores for ntcg were 0.86 but when the real results came it was 0.67 only so then we realized that th there was a gap and um, so what if in retrospect we tried to fit if we were putting a simple arima model 111 uh, uh, instead of um, uh, with the correct data of full research papers so interestingly uh, these are the um, cross validation results uh, if we had done that the average cross validation result would have been 0.8323 and the winning submission was 0.8273 so this could have been a better option for us in phase one um, phase two uh, again um, we basically uh, applied the naive exponential smoothing and the arima variance and we compared uh, uh, the uh, cross validation scores and we finally decided that naive exponential smoothing works uh, pretty much uh, better than the other candidates our cross validation score for ntcg averaging uh, for three times was 0.79 and the final score was 0 0.80 in the actual result and, uh, and that tallied well then uh, phase three was basically more significantly more complicated uh, than the previous uh, phases at least for us because the top institutions were not performing consistently uh, or, or if we look the top 20 positions were uh, across the last five years there were 67 unique institutions and uh, that that indicated that there was a lot of fluctuation there and hence predicting for the phase three was much more challenging so we used the exponential smoothing with the tuning uh, of alpha by doing the grid search in one direction and uh, the average uh, cross validation in dcg uh, result was 0.72 um, and the actual result was 0 0.7334 pretty nearby and uh, we did also try uh, the other candidate models there like arima and uh, uh, the naive exponential smoothing but they were not performing as well as uh, the exponential smoothing with tuning parameter alpha so in in summary uh, uh, basically the raw data from uh, microsoft academic graph uh, was large and we had to have tools to deal with that and apache spark and spark sql helped us do that quite easily then uh, the idea of having a crawler script uh, that can extract some additional information um, like the number of pages for a paper or the section to which it belongs helped us to increase the available historical data that was available then um, then the human in loop machine learning pipeline wherein because we extracted uh, the full research papers we verified it by manual checks uh, etc um, kind of helped us to spot uh, some anomalies 
and uh, we had a lot of candidate models to play with um, even though i didn't uh, describe it in the talk we did try with a causal model uh, <coughs> looking at factors like h index or the publication frequency etc we also tried uh, network based models and used page ranking uh, techniques uh, but for us um, uh, these simple techniques finally worked out well uh, maybe the simple models generalized well uh, with lot of history and uh, the overall score uh, that we have um, uh, in the final results is 0.7508 and the winning uh, score of the uh, first uh, team is 0.7656 uh, so that's all i had question uh, thank you very much uh, one quick question did you find that your crawling of the ACMDL and your models for classifying full research papers, did that yield different results than the, the, the KD, KDD Cup selected papers file that we yes, included? Yes, yes, indeed yes. So uh, um, for uh, phase two, we started with the five year history, but apparently for some years, I think it was for 2011 uh, or 12, I, I don't exactly remember, there was actually a gap in the provided data with the actuals. Okay. So I think that helped. Thank you. Hi, uh, thank you for the good talk. I just want to verify one thing. The, uh, is an exponential smoothing uh, a special case of autoregressive auto model in your R ARIMA? It's just order one of uh, ARIMA, isn't it? Uh, or is there anything that uh, subtle differences? Uh, there is a subtle difference like for instance the naive exponential smoothing which we used in phase two is just an exponential decay uh, whereas uh, in the, in the case of arima we would be actually finding the regression coefficients uh, which would be like uh, 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 like the autoregressive part the uh, moving average part and the difference part so which means the input to the arima model would be actually differenced. Uh, it won't be the actual time series. So if it was um, A, B, C, then the input would have been B minus A, C minus B uh, in the case of ARIMA. Whereas in exponential smoothing, it's just uh, the actual values A, B, C with the decaying coefficients like. The coefficient value is fixed there, but in the case of ARIMA, that needs to be learned. Uh, okay. Any other questions? So was there a particular reason uh, why you chose to do the feature engineering in Spark as opposed to maybe pulling more of it like in memory and then doing it with your Python stack? Did you notice like one way or another? Like uh, was it faster to do it within Spark or was there any particular choices that led, led you down one route for that feature engineering <laughs> as opposed to another? Yeah, so the reason we went with uh, Spark was um, the Microsoft Academic uh, graph data when, when downloaded and extracted turned out to be bulky for, uh, for our re relatively small workstations. So what we did was we had a Spark cluster where we could load this and especially we noticed that the joins, basically since the rel score calculation involves joining papers and uh, the authors, um, so that join can be handled very easily with the SQL. So uh, since that framework was already available, we found it handy and that helped. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Thank you very much, Joe. Thank you.